Skeletor had a lot of insults, you know, royal boob uh -huh. and all of that. Right. Yeah. And so one day Lou said, why don't you just throw a bunch of insults out? So I did. And about, oh, one or two could be used. The rest was so filthy that we've never heard from them again. <laughs> Let's bring in our heroine. She is an actress whose body of work includes The New Adventures of Batman, The Plastic Man Adventure Show, and Avatar The Last Airbender. Today, she joins us to discuss giving voice to the following Ethereum characters. Ariel, Castaspella, Dina, Fusabella the Muckress, Good Witch, Hungra, Krista's Mother, Magic Cat, Queen Mara, Marista, Octavia, Chakra, Squall, Catra, and of course, Princess Adora, better known as the Princess of Power herself, Shira. Please welcome Melanie Britt. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. I've missed you all so much. I really have. Oh, we've absolutely missed you on our stages. Thank you for joining us here. How are you doing in your part of the world? Well, pretty good. Uh, considering what we're going through, I mean, it's it's been probably the strangest experience that I've had in my life, and I'm sure as, as, as everyone. And uh, I'm doing okay, and it makes me even happier that I can be here today with all the fans that, you know, I miss it so much. I miss oh. it maybe more than they do. Only thing that's lacking are, the, are all the costumes because I really love seeing them at the Comic-Cons. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's absolute pleasure to for myself to finally get a chance to host you in, in any sort of environment like this because I'm gonna say it right now, I'll put the card on the table. Uh, you gave voice to my first and greatest cartoon crush. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm probably not the first person to say this way, but the, that character, though, will come up later, and it may not be the obvious choice, but oh, really. Oh, okay. All right. So, and without further ado, let's bring in our second guest. Let's bring in our favorite villain. He is an actor with an amazing body of work, which includes the Smurfs, Black Star, and the never-ending story. Today, though, he joins us to discuss giving voice to the following Eternian characters. And this is a long list, folks. Dragoon, Agar, and and our Agast, Agas Ood, Avian Man, Azog, Baron Grodd, Batty, Bear Man, Beta, Boomerang Salesman, Brindle, Buzzeroff, Captain Falk, Cat, Spy, Chancellor, Chimera, Dataris, Dunkareem, Dr. Sheevan, Draka, Druid, Galen, Game Master, Gatekeeper, Gorgon, Grandfather, Helmsman, Hexon, Hisser, Jarvan, King Thomas, Kor, Crawl, Locust, Mac, Mask, Makalea, Matro, Mogath, Morgar, Morningstar, Negator. Yeah. <laughs> Old Man, Pool, Professor Orion, Raybar, Roboto, Salesman, Shaman, Sleeping Tree, Smudge, Squire, Wilkins, Storyteller, Toron, Torg, Torm, Vulcan, Yoker, Xanthar, Merman, Man at Arms, Mossman, Cringer, Battle Cat, and the Evil Lord of Destruction himself, Skeletor. Please welcome Alan Oppenheimer. <laughs> Hello there. Did I do all of that? Yes, sir, you did. <laughs> well, you read it because I didn't remember it. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. <clears throat> of course, uh, I'd rather be. I'd rather be at the convention hall because I love talking to the people one-on-one. -on -one. But this is a pretty good substitute for it. And I'm glad I haven't seen Melendi since we worked together in January or February. Hello there. And uh, we live about 10 miles apart, but uh, she's never invited me over for coffee. So what am I going to do? Well, so anyway. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to be here. And uh, I hope we can uh, interact well with... Uh, with the fans who have questions, and uh, I can't give you a hug like I like to do, but I'll give you a virtual hug. Alan, it is always a pleasure to see you. I so enjoy like, hosting you on stage. It's absolutely wonderful. And for both of you, uh, yes, we absolutely get GalaxyCon. We're looking forward to the day when the world gets a little bit back to normal and we can get you back on our stages and back in front of your fans. In the meantime, though, we have this electronic forum we call the GalaxyCon virtual stage. We are so glad to have you here today. I think it's a miracle. Thank you. It's absolutely remarkable, and we're both, I know we're both just yes. thrilled here, really. Absolutely, absolutely. So our team right now is going through the chat room and pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I would just love to hear how these iconic roles for you began. And to put it in historical context, it goes before that. It usually goes back. You were both in the Filmation family uh, a couple of years before He-Man and She-Ra sort of came on out. Yeah. And, and I was going to start with that. And... I think 
for me, I can't talk about the the, the those characters, Shira and Skeletor, without having to talk a little bit about this, Flash Gordon from Filmation, because I think there's a lot of that, uh, a lot of the ideas, and I think the animators and everybody else sort of use the stuff with that, and it's a great show in and of itself. Alan, voice of Ming and the Merciless, Melanie, the voice of Princess Aura, and that's the crush I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. You, you, have good, you have good taste, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the All thing is that... Knees, oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to have to get a private chat with you later. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, dear, so dear, yes. Uh, uh, actually, how did how did you each get involved with filmation? I, let's start there. Go ahead, uh, Melendi. Well, let's see. I I think just as you said, it was uh, you know back in the day we used to go into the agency and they had a reel to reel machine, and we would audition for the characters, and uh, generally then we would find out if we got them, and that's what started. <laughs> Do you remember which was the first one of the uh, filmation things that I did? Do you? I don't remember which was first. I think that was uh, probably the Adventures of Batman. New Adventures of Batman is Batgirl and okay. Catwoman. Okay. All right. Well, if it was that one, then I just I just auditioned for those those characters and uh, got them. And back then, you had to be able to do three characters. I mean, mm -hmm. that was you know prerequisite. And of course, uh, there were two <laughs> definite ones in the uh, uh, Batman and uh, Robin series. So yeah. that's how I got there, the, there at first. However, with She-Ra and stuff, it was a different situation. Different yeah, how, how so? How did, the, how, did the, how did she Ra evolve for you? Well, uh, I went in normally, you know, just yeah. to do the audition. And then I got a call from TJ, my agent at the time, and he said, uh, the producer would like to see you. And I said, well, Lou knows me. And he said, yeah, I want to see you. So I went over there and he started talking to me about this series. And I knew that it was really something special. First of all, it was special anyway, because it was one of the first female superheroes, you know, ever. Yeah. And then I could tell by what was coming out from his heart that it, it meant a lot to him. So we talked about the character, and then uh, uh, he uh, uh, just kind of told me more about her, and he said, you think you're, you can do this, and I think you're up to this, and I said, oh, yes, I think so, certainly want to try, and uh, then I got it later on, in fact, but I didn't find out until like two or three years ago. His daughter, Erica, mm -hmm. she was the reason that the... the uh, the uh, the idea of auditioning anybody else was uh, taken away. Oh. She told her dad, she said, Dad, she's the only one who can do this character. I'll be done. So I, yeah, yeah. So I, I really owe my whole She-Ra career to Erica. And I, have, wow. I, I hope I get to see her again and give her a huge hug. You know, but and, but I I'm amazed that no one ever told me that. Wow, isn't that interesting? Maybe she didn't. Maybe she thought it wouldn't make me feel good or something like that. No, it makes me feel fantastic because Lou wanted to write by his characters, and this yeah. was, as I say, this was a very special character to him. Uh, yeah, I I I did not have the pleasure of meeting Lou or any other uh, filmation of us, but uh, I have such admiration for their output, and they really had a com uh, commitment to quality and really oh, trying to make the best you could do with the Saturday morning rules and everything else and family he entertainment. Never, he never sent his stuff out to the uh, 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 other play to uh, where did they where, where did they send him? Korea. Oh, yeah, they yeah never, overseas, yeah work overseas, never send it overseas. And he was really, really adamant about the principle of, of the principle of his, his the things he did, which yeah. you, know, you can't beat that. You can't beat what that. a guy. Absolutely. And 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 the and the morals, the morals of uh, of the stories absolutely else too. So so Alan, uh how yeah. did Skeletor and the other, all the other uh, He-Man characters begin for you? Well, I think Skeletor was the first thing I did for Filmation. Uh, and I went out there 
I think I, I don't think I uh, auditioned in the office. I think I went out there right away. And uh, we began to talk, and he showed me a picture, you know, a cell. And then when I saw the bony head, <laughs> I just made him nasal, you know. <laughs> so that's how that happened. <laughs> the laugh came, uh, I guess, maybe at the first or second recording session. It wasn't written in, and I just put it in there. <laughs> well, they all jumped at that. And then it became, you know, the signature of Skeletor. Um, I, everything I did after that for Filmation, which was, I don't know, four or five different series, it all came from He-Man, Mass of the Universe. Now, that was Skeletor. And, of course, as Melendi said, we had to do two other voices. Mm -hmm. So the other one was Merman, and Merman is in the water. So that's why I talk like that all the time. Talk through a gargle. You'll see. Hello, Patty. And then there was uh, Cringer. Well, Cringer's a coward, so that's easy, you know. I stole that from somebody. We steal from everybody and just bend it a little. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to copy something millennial. He did, but I couldn't get up that high, you see. Wow. <laughs> but then we, uh, Ming the Merciless is also a ripoff of Skeletor, isn't it? It's kind of Skeletor, but in a eh, kind of a he, 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 up in so, here. It's a little higher. Yeah, it's, it's. And then it's, I love it, doing a uh, Scud. Oh, and I love doing Scuzz. Was that the guy with the yeah. cigar in his mouth? Scuzz. So I just, uh, you know, I just put a pen in my mouth like it was a cigar. And put it down in here somewhere. So it came out like George C. Scott, yeah, yeah. who was my favorite. I had worked yeah, you, with him in a movie. You, you, yeah, you worked with him. Yeah. I Absolutely. worked with him in the Hindenburg. Love that man. Yeah. Yeah. There are lots of anecdotes, but those are on screen anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What's What's been What's become a treasured memory from being a part of, of all this. These, again, these, these, these wonderful characters that endured with this generation and grew up with it. And, and so many, so many children learned from these characters and learned from these adventures. Whether it's simple morals or just simple, don't play with matches, something, <laughs> they made no safety to it. So what, what, what's, what's, what's stuck with you all this time? Well, I had three very extraordinary experiences. I didn't even know there was a moral at the end of the series. Oh, yeah. But I was working, uh, I think it was first time in Miami, Mike. I was working there for you. And somebody came to the table, a young man, maybe in his 30s. And uh, he said how a moral at the end of one of the uh, episodes had saved him from suicide when he was a child. Well, it's the first time I ever heard anything like that. And... Uh, it was extraordinary, and when I think about it, even I tear up. And then it happened one more time, and then it also happened to, with a woman a couple of years later that she was hopelessly lost and, and had been bullied, and there was some moral about bullying, and it gave her the courage to go on. Yeah. Uh, these are the people who gave me hugs, and I missed them. Uh, I had one more experience. Again, this was in Miami, Mr. Bro, and there were three Argentinians who came to the table, and they said, one of them said there was a moral, that if you get separated from your family on a hike, don't move, they'll find you, otherwise you'll get lost. He said, well, we were in the Amazon, and I wandered off from the party, and I started to walk around, and I thought, oh, no, wait here, and about two hours later, they found me. Again, the moral at the end of one of these story, one of these episodes. Wow. So you know, when you do these things, you get paid, you go home, you, it's, it's a job. Little did I realize the effect it has had on people over the years, and I find it humbling, and I'm grateful for it. We we certainly way. grateful for your performances. Absolutely, we, I feel the same way I, I, as Alan. Uh, you have the same thing. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, while, while we were doing the series, Lou uh, uh, sent me a letter from a woman who uh, uh, 
said that her daughter, well, well the, first of all, the, the moral of the story was at the end of it, or the, or the anecdote was that if someone touches you inappropriately or then go to your parents or some adult, blah, 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 blah. Apparently this little girl had been molested, but she wouldn't tell. And when she told her, or at the moral of the story said, uh, told him to tell, she told. Yeah. And, the, and the mother thanked us for the series for that. And then as Alan, so many people have come up to me in these Comic Cons. The first one I ever did, I was so scared because I'm really kind of a private person in the sense that crowds scare me. And mm. uh, a girl came up to me. And she had a button on with a picture of a, a young man on it. And I said, oh, who's that? She said, that was my brother. And I said, oh, I'm sorry you lost him. She said, well, I'm coming to you because when he was in hospice, he held the she doll in his hands. Oh, my God. Because, and watched the show. It him comfort. I, had, I mean, all of these things, I've, I've had so many people tell me stories how, you know, latchkey kids that... that this this series was their parental love, and um, yeah. it, it yeah. I mean, who in their lifetime can do things like this <clears throat> from a cartoon? I mean, really, it's remarkable. And even now, as Alan, I'm sure he he they're, they're, the fans who come to see us, their children are watching this. Movie. That's right, and they, and they bring them. them. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. yeah. And some of the fan mail that's forwarded to me, but they reveal how grateful they are for the experience they had. Yeah, I mean. We're the luckiest people in the world, Alan. <laughs> oh, man, you better believe it. Touch people that way, you know? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. What's, what's, been, what's been the most, what was the most fun part about playing these characters? <laughs> Working with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, I mean, I, I, I these those the guys on the show. Linda was wonderful, but oh, yeah. the guys on the show, I, I mean, seriously, th these men know how to how to improvise, and they know what's funny. And sometimes, <laughs> well, as Alan, Alan would do it all the time. Some of it couldn't be used, right, Alan? <laughs> I'm sorry. What'd you say? I <laughs> think he would improvise hysterical things, but some of it couldn't be used, right? Oh, a lot of it wound up on the cutting floor. Sure. <laughs> I remember Lou said Lou said to me, you know, Skeletor had a lot of insults, you know, royal boob uh -huh. and all of that. Right. Yeah. And so one day Lou said, why don't you just throw a bunch of insults out? So I did. And about, oh, one or two could be used. The rest was so filthy that we've never heard from them again. <laughs> but, yeah, but the thing was for me, I mean, we we would get all our laughs out for the most part. Uh, yeah. in, in the room, we were fortunate enough to be able to go sit around a table like in a movie and, yeah. re, you know, go over the whole script. And I have never laughed so hard in my life. It was just these guys were remarkable. Alan being the worst crit. The worst <laughs> one of them all. So, I miss I miss John Irwin, Melendi. Yeah, I, do I really do. He won't do this kind of thing. And I'm so sorry because the fans would love it. And, uh, but that's, we went back and forth, John and I, and we still do. We talk every couple of weeks on the phone and it's, it's I mean, I wish I recorded it. He's hysterical. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it, well, welcome to come on and join us. Maybe in this, this uh, like our electronic format, he might be more comfortable. Uh, he yeah. says no, he says no. no. He's a very shy man, Pat. He's very shy. I, I, I have to, I have to try. I have to try. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alan, you raised an interesting point. You said uh, some people from South America. So, does this mean that in the foreign markets, uh, it was still your voices with subtitles? Well, I, I guess so. I, I've never followed it. Uh, I get residuals from overseas, but not from Argentina. Okay. <laughs> I know, uh, no, I, I really don't know. Maybe uh, Mike Broda can tell you, but uh, I, I don't know how that uh, how that went. Uh, I do know that one time I was working. Oh, I was working in Germany on the Never Ending Story, and I tuned into uh, uh, a TV show that I've done, and it was dubbed in in German. And it, believe me, it lost a lot in German. <laughs> 
my daughters, my daughters, uh, uh, my daughter, one of my daughters lived in Spain for many, many years, for 20 years. And uh, my grandchildren saw it in German. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know how it was, but they saw it in German. Yeah. Oh, very nice. What's uh, over the years, I'm sure at the tables, people have brought uh, so many interesting things uh, to autograph. What's the most unusual thing you've been you've been asked to sign? somebody's leg okay uh they had a they had a, a tattoo of skeletor on there and i signed it unfortunately my signature overwhelmed the picture so i said can you remove that and i'll do it again smaller he said no i like it this way <laughs> yeah, I, I, I i i signed my name on people before and i thought is this a wise thing to do you know <laughs> <laughs> But, but I mean, I mean, I just thought of them. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't understand it, but I did it. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Like I said, I, I often wonder. Like uh, some, sometimes people should teach a, a crash course for new people. Like people are going to ask you to sign their biceps and everything else, and then they're going to get tattooed over. And oh sure. They're back. They're oh back. yeah. Mm -hmm. What? And, back. Oh yeah. Back. Yeah. So, and. Yeah. And and some other nether regions, but we won't go into that. Well, I've never been boom, asked boom. that. I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think your fans no, would do that. No, there, no, are, no. there are other not fandoms. Today. Not today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, okay. I think we're good to go on audience questions. Uh, thank you for indulging me in mine. And I just want to say once again, thank you again. Thank okay. you again for for oh, for pleasure. what you've done, bringing life to so many of, the, of these characters that I've come to treasure all these years, and that's a testament to both of you as actors. Thank you so much. It thank really you. is. I thank, thank you for you your talents. I thank you for your professionalism, and I thank you for your performances. Thank you, Pat. Absolutely. And let's roll our first question from our audience, and this is going to come from Lana, who wants to know: Do you think voicing a cartoon made to sell toys would still be impactful thirty years later? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's the biggest surprise in the world. Wait a minute, but but I, you see, everybody says it was it was made to, it was the cartoon was made to make uh, to sell toys. However, if if toys, Lou was so so passionate and and had such integrity about this cartoon. I don't get the the point. You know. I mean, if, if the idea was generated for, to sell a toy, what a great idea. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I had a series at Disney that was canceled because the toys weren't ready. Oh, the really? Wuzzles, the Wuzzles. Oh, the Wuzzles, yeah. They came out the same time as Gummy Bears, and their toys were ready. Wow. And Wuzzles wasn't, and we were canceled after 10 weeks. It's a great show, but nobody saw it. Well, I know that Lou tried to get this the the Shira uh, uh, so so sold for quite a while, but nobody was interested. Well, again, well, again, it was wait a, a a female action star cartoon. Oh no, 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 no. Let's let's do a Barbie. Let's do a yeah. yeah well, what I say is whatever gets it on there. I, I, I would agree. It may it, it may have been Mattel's starting point they wanted to do this toy line and they came, they came to filmation but i think that was the clay and lou and filmation and all of you and everybody else molded it into something uh, way beyond way, way abs he and norm prescott were wonderful they they knew how to sell too you can have a great idea but if you don't know how to sell it who cares mm -hmm. and they did and norm was the superb salesman yeah, yeah. You get it out there, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. So, Lana, thank you very much. This is a good one to start us off with. And let's have another one from Brandon. What are some other roles you cherish from your voice acting career? Um, mm -hmm. that, Val, whatever, whatever Alcor, Alcor, Rock Fighter, yeah. all of that in The Never Ending Story. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Those are the two favorites with the fans, too. Yeah. Oh, With Vanity Smurf. Reason. Vanity Smurf also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For me, the first one that comes to mind, of course, is she -Ra. I don't think, I mean, I loved it. I really, really loved it. And then Adora. And uh, 
I really liked doing Casta Spella. She was quite fun, you know. And uh, and then the one that it, that really never, no one ever talks about that, but maybe because the series wasn't uh, that popular. Or it was popular, but not as popular as she was. I just had the most fun doing Penny and the Chief in Plastic Man. Because she was so, she just, oh, she was so in love with class. It was, it was, oh, I just had the most fun doing that. It was that so was wonderful. Mm, that was, that was, a, that was a really fun show. Yeah. Uh, you and Michael had great chemistry on that as well. And I think I fell in love with Michael on that show. I don't know. <laughs> Who's that, Mike, I, Mike Bell? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the guy who sent you up to get spit on by uh, <laughs> during the speed buggy uh, reading. By, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a fun story for another time. That's what I do. But anyway, yeah. but Brandon, thank you so much. Great question. Yeah, what do we have next? From Matthew, if you both could take a ride on a Falcor, where would you want to ride him? Hmm. Boy, I never thought of that. Gee whiz. I'd I wouldn't mind going to Italy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Italy, Italy and Spain. We could go to Spain, couldn't we, Melendi? I love Spain. I really I know do. you do. I do. <laughs> Let's fly to Barcelona, you and I, on Falcor's back. All right? Absolutely. Okay. I will okay. He has to wait. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Let's move on. <laughs> What's like from Andrea? Oh, what Falcor or Swift Wind win a race? Who the so hell I is guess Swift between, Wind? between two of it, that's Who's that's Swift that's her. Swift, Swift Wind. Wind? Swift Wind. Yes. Don't even say it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm avoiding you. I know you. You know me so well. God. Yeah. Oh, well, I think you you would win. And yeah, I'd like way behind Swift Wind. He's, he's... <laughs> I knew you couldn't help it. I know you were ahead of me on that one, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. That's right. Yeah. You're right. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Swift Wind. Thank you, Andrea. All right, moving along. All right, you. Good question, Andre. Good question. Yeah. Swift Wind is the winner. Fire nose <laughs> from Casca. Oh, ha have you have you seen the new Shira reboot? Alan or me? Who me? You, I, 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 either of you. I have seen. I I well, uh, there was such controversy as I'm sure you know uh, uh, when it was uh, being touted, a and such v vitriol that was spewed for the. Uh, uh, um, the people who loved the original Shira, and I finally had had enough of it, so I said something about it. And uh, um, then I, I, I did want to watch it to see what it was like because there can certainly be two Shiras, you know, uh, whatever. <coughs> and I watched the first three. I like. I remember I liked the music and I liked some of the graphics. But I did not, it didn't get me in my soul, you know, and, and they had wonderful actors. Yeah. And oh, that was the other thing. One of their actors had said how awful the acting was on this series. And I thought to myself, if you'd been around in the 70s, you wouldn't, or 80s, you would not have said that probably because that was the style back then. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so a. It was just a little cheap shot. And I thought, well, you're not smart enough to know that. Anyway. Good for you. Yeah. Anyway, well, so, you know, I was about to say, say you you you've taken the higher road. Well, I know I to me, maybe it's the higher road, but the truth it, it was the truth. You know, yeah. I mean that was what we did in the eighties. Yeah. That's the kind of cartoons we did. Yeah, I, I um, yeah. and uh, yeah, I I would I would I would uh, yeah. yeah I would I I I agree with you, and I would disagree with whoever made that made that compliment yeah, yeah. I, I kind of disagree with it too yeah very very much so so well casca that's that's your answer uh may not have been the one you were looking for but that's the one you got <laughs> so oh, okay. well, I, didn't, I did not like the series i just only watched three yeah. and it didn't, it didn't 
because I'm a different kind of person. I wanted something that touched my heart really closely, and it just didn't get the first three. So maybe I should watch the whole thing. Again. It's it, it's it's made for it's made for a, a different, not even a kid's mindset. It's almost made for like a late teen, early twenty somethings uh, sort of a mindset and appealing to this way. And and I it does very well for what it sets out to do. But they yeah, they, yeah. they 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 ha they had an audience in mind, and they went after them, and they succeeded. Good. You you both had your audiences that you were after for your time, and you succeeded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Par parallel parallel lanes. That's that that's all it is, in, yeah, in my exactly. opinion. That's how I it. Sun so. is coming in. Ooh. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, uh, let's have another one from Ryan. Do you have favorite cartoons from when you were growing up? Hmm. Well, the cartoons were out of. Uh, uh, Warner Brothers and Disney, you know, and they were, um, you know, Donald Duck and uh, <laughs> Road Runner and all of those. And I loved them. But uh, when I was growing up, it was uh, before television. My God, that long ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I would run home from school to listen to radio. And uh, that's really why I became an, an actor, really, because uh, I found I, I loved listening to the radio and I found I could imitate those people. Yeah. So uh, radio was was my life as as cartoons and television uh, was for the uh, 80s generation. Yeah. What were some of your favorite radio shows? Oh, uh, The Lone Ranger, um, uh, Don Winslow of the Navy. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Like, I can't really think of them all now. Oh, oh uh, what? Oh, uh, the Goldbergs. I mean, that was a radio show too, before it became a television show. Now, yeah. Oh, a lot of a lot of stuff. I uh, mm. oh, my, uh, my favorite cartoon growing up was Dudley Do Right. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Who played that character? I don't know. I loved him though, and that other guy, the guy. I'll look, I'll look it up. The dog. You know, the, uh, uh, Droopy. Droopy, I love Droopy. Droopy and Dudley Do Right, uh, yeah, and Mighty Mouse. I like those. Mighty Mouse, yes. Mm -hmm. I did the New Adventures of Mighty Mouse for filmation. Yes. Oh, did you? Oh, how cool! Yes. Oh, and but but the way I, I uh, uh, was talking about, he he did the voices. I started doing the voices when I would hear commercials. And uh, my dad had a, a tape recorder, a reel-to-reel -reel recorder. And so when he was busy, I would be playing with the tape recorder. And I remember my favorite commercial to imitate was Swag. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you need Swag on your hair. You know, whatever. All right, let me tell you, Melendi, I was so naive when I was, whatever, six, seven, or eight, listening to the radio. And listen to the Philharmonic, and I'd stare. We'd all stare at the radio, you know. I thought there were little mice in there with musical instruments. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh dear! Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Scott was the voice of Dudley Do Right. Oh, oh Bill, yeah. I love you. Who worked with you on Wuzzles? Oh he God. did. He worked on Wuzzles. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking at his, him right now. Yeah, he worked on Wuzzles. Oh, I, I adored him. Well, is, he, is, he, is he still around? Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he's, he's, he's left us. Oh yeah. I left us, left us young, uh, left us early too, 1985, according to this. Oh, but, no. but uh, yeah, he was very involved. He was very, I'm looking at it real quick. Yeah, he was very involved with the uh, Jay Ward and the Bullwinkle and, and oh, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And Fracture Flickers, hosted by Hans Conried, who's yeah. oh, my, my, pers that. my personal god of, 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 of voice acting. I love that. Oh yeah, so absolutely. So and Freeberg, Freeberg was a, yeah. a voice on the Wuzzles. Stan Freeberg, brilliant. Yeah, just left us recently. Ryan, thank you so much. That was a fun one. Hey, what do we have next? From Brianna. Oh, from Maria. Sorry. What is the most surprising place you've seen your character in? What does that mean? You're talking about an airport or a toilet? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe you've seen somebody uh, 
either in full costume or maybe just saw somebody uh, uh, had a tattoo or somebody oh, just happened to be wearing right. a T-shirt and in the grocery store and you went up and say, hey, you like Skeletor? Yeah, well, I do the voice. Or I got perhaps you. something like that, yeah. Okay. After you, Melendi. I, I, again, the, the strangest place is on somebody's body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen my character anywhere else. No, no except for the Comic Cons. Me too. No. You know, I see a lot yeah. of great Skeletor costumes in, at, at the Comic Cons. I was on an escalator once at LA Airport, and I was talking to Mary, and the person in front of me whipped her head around. She recognized my voice, but that's about as I wasn't even doing Skeletor, but that's about as close as it. <laughs> that's been. really neat. That's neat. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Maria, thank you very much for that. And a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our panelists like I am now or purchase an autograph, please head over to galaxygon.com and let's do another one, which from Andre, who wants to know, what is the most rewarding thing about being a voice actor? Creating. Creating something where you can't use your body, except to do this, but it's not fully acting. So you have to transpose everything from your brain and your body into your voice. And I find it terrifically challenging and terrifically satisfying. And sometimes you, uh, you fumble around till it comes out right. Especially when I say, can I hear a playback? And I'll tell you an anecdote about that a little later. And in the playback, you say, oh, no, 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 that isn't it. And then you go on from there and you create, and that's what I want to hear. That's it. Okay. I think, it, as yeah, Alan yeah. said, that the most rewarding thing is when you actually get what you what you your brain has to compute yeah. to come <laughs> out. It's to, for me. I think it's much easier to to do on camera stuff, which I hate doing. I won't do it anymore. But <laughs> but I think it's easier <laughs> because. Sometimes you have to, you have with voice acting, you have to get your voice has to be the whole, almost the whole picture. Yeah, you have a, an animated cartoon thing, but still there has to be, there has to be another element in it. I don't just, I don't know what it is, but you have to, just as Alan said, you have to hear it and say, okay, all right, all right. If you hear the playback and you say, now I see the whole thing. Or let me have another run at that, because this is what's missing. I ran into that, if I may, when I was doing Falcor. And I had a playback, and I said, and uh, and uh, what's his name who directed it? He said, that's fine. I said, no, I have to do it again. He says, okay, but we come back tomorrow. And then the second time I recorded it, and playback, now Falcor had heart. The first time, it was technically correct, but who gave a damn? So that's what was missing, and I knew it. That's why I said I got to come back tomorrow and do it. And that's what you see, the heart. Wolf. Yeah, Wolfgang Peterson, that was the director. So, and Andre, thank you very much. That was a great one. And here's over Laura. Has the process of voice acting changed since you started? Uh, well, technology-wise, it certainly has. We can we can all agree to that. I think so. I think because just as I said about the earlier, uh, 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 it, it goes through through stages. I mean, for instance, now I think most of the a lot of the acting is just more realistic. I know a lot of the things that I audition for. It's a much more realistic sort of a, a character, which for me is kind of harder to do that because I still don't get there. There's such a a strange level that you have to get into for animation and then video games. And it, it's everybody probably thinks it's easy, but I don't find it that easy unless you're just so gifted. Anything you touch, you know, you can just make it into. A I don't find it very, very creative at all. When I oh, listen, yeah. when I when I when I see performances in cartoons today, yeah. Uh, yeah. I find it pretty dull. Pretty dull. A lot of them are. A lot of them yeah. are. And it's because there's nothing beyond just being themselves. What am I yeah. going to do? I, 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 I do Skeletor that. like this? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's more fun to have a cartoon. That's you know? right. That's right. It's a bit of fantasy. 
That's right. <laughs> oh, no, we, don't, we don't do cartoons. We do animation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that that's 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 kind of a that's kind of a mentality and and a mindset for a lot of the product, not all of it, but for a lot of product being put out now for older markets, older viewers, and stuff like that. So that's and, and, and as well, let's be honest, a lot of it is because it's a money driven uh, business now, and they'll get celebrities, and they recognize that voice, and they don't care about the cartoon. Exactly, actually, it's, it's just the voice they hear. <clears throat> Indeed, indeed. So, uh, thank you, Laura. That was a good one. And from Tim, do you keep any memorabilia from your shows? After you, dear. Uh, I have, I have an old Shira, which is I. If I had known that they would be valuable, oh my God. I probably wouldn't have messed it up and had the kids play with it so much. So I have an old Shira. I have an old Catra, and I have a Castaspera. And I have, uh, uh, um, I think it's a, it's the pink cat that I uh, had. I have those. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then as I have some things that I actually bought because I just thought they were so cute. Uh, uh, one of those, um, the little funny figures, you know. Oh, the Funko Pops. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the the, 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 the big the big heads. Yeah, yeah, the big ones. I love the yeah. big ones. Mm -hmm. so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So excellent. How yeah. about you? How about you, Alan? I'm sorry, I also have some scripts and some old scripts. Really? Few, you you um, kept your scripts? Uh, no, not all. Uh, of yeah. them. I, that's what I never saved. Yeah, just a couple. And I don't have anything except if whatever a fan gives me or sends me. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's the only memorabilia I have. But. Uh, I kept no scripts at all. Oh God, they're worth a fortune today. I know. Well, oh, the scripts are. Oh, mm. uh, an, ori an, an original one of your scripts, autographed by you with your notes or whatever. Yeah, that that would yeah. be yeah, a holy be grail to to some of your fans. Yeah, I threw them away after the job was over. Well, again, who knew? Kept I mean, because I mean, as, as Alan would concur. <laughs> You know, we worked a lot back then, not just in the uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. animation thing. I mean, yeah. we go from that job, and then we go do another job, another yeah. job, and then maybe on camera. You know, all of this. So it was like, okay, that's over. I mean, really, that's right. And that's and, right. And, and, and if you had all kept every script from what you worked on, you, you'd need a, a small warehouse to store Absolutely. them all in. Well, there were that's true. <laughs> they're they're thick and heavy. That's <laughs> true. I mean. Heavy. That, like that. Yeah. No, in in those days, literally, we would do we could do two or three uh, cartoons a day, different, you know, between Hanna Barbera, Disney, and the Filmation, yeah. Yeah. plus commercial voiceovers, commercials. Yeah. Right. It was never, and it was one of the golden era for us. It was. It was. It was good. <sighs> yeah, yeah. The those those commercial gigs were the we gift they kept giving. We sure <laughs> stepped in it, didn't we, Melendi? <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Tim, thank you very much. I think we have time for one more, so let's roll with one from Jonathan. What is the best piece of advice you received when getting into the industry? Hmm. Boy, what a question. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think the best piece of advice I got was from my mother, who came to see me in summer stock when I was doing Stalag 13, Stalag 17. And she said, uh, well, you've got it. Keep at it. Mm -hmm. I think mine was uh, from my high school drama teacher, who was a magnificent person. And she, she told me to remember that it's always unity. It's always unity. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the truth. And I think that's why the she series and the He-Man series was so well received this many years later is that there was a lot of unity in that cast, a lot of unity. What does unity mean, Melendi? I don't know. Well, it's, it's just not about one person. You know, oh, oh, if you're doing oh. a play, a, sh uh, a show, 
our, 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 our cartoon series. It's not about one person. It's no. about the whole, the whole, the whole play. Let's and say. how you fit into it, how yeah. your character fits into it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and both of your respective shows just had a, a cornucopia of characters and not just the ones you yourselves voiced so many from both of the shows and they, they didn't have to do that. They could have cut corners and said, we're going to have a core group of four or five characters and then we'll have five or six villains and we'll just recycle those designs through and through. But Filmation, it just it's kept oh. going. And we have a new character, a new, a new, uh, a new friend, a new ally. I have, I have something to say about Lou Scheimer. Uh, I've been working the show and I noticed he had a ring on his finger after you know, two or three years, I know. I said, what is that? What, what's that? He says, oh, that's my college. I said, oh, where'd you go? He said, Carnegie Tech. I said, so did I. We were there at the same time. He was on the third floor. I was on the first floor. We never met. Didn't know it. Turned out we also dated the same woman a year apart. Uh, it is a small world, and I, but I would not want to paint it. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much. That was a great one. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the voices of Shira and Skeletor, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests or purchase a personalized autograph, please head over to GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out our schedule of upcoming events like this one. Uh, panelists, any final words for our audience before we leave today? I hope we see them within the next year. I swear to God, I hope so. They mean everything to me. I just love it. I love it. Me I too. used to be shy before I did this. I love it. <laughs> I miss you all. And just as Alvin said, I hope we can all see each other in person very, very, very soon. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Wear a mask and social distance. Absolutely. Indeed. Ah, uh, great sir and lovely lady. It has been my absolute pleasure to serve you both today. Thank you for joining us at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you all for those great questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And please keep washing those hands. <laughs>